Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hope After the Landslide. Gosh, I've missed you. It's been a long time since I have been here on Facebook Live, and I am so excited because I have some special guests here tonight. Well, everybody's special at the end of the day, but before we get started with our um, so-called interview here with my friends, I wanted to uh, start off by telling you, first of all, go get a piece of paper and pencil or pen, and I want you guys to write things down. I may remind you throughout this program. And if you're watching this after it's live, then you can um, also take down this information. But a lot of times everybody's asking me, you know, how can I get the resurfacing book, the Grieving Moms Finding Hope resurfacing book that, that I had assembled together through God's uh, love and mercy uh, and writing it in an amazing tree house. But it is a 12-week program to help us to go through grieving. And it's not to tell you how to grieve. It's just to help you go through all the different subjects of things like, you know, like when we're talking about when we're frozen, when the landslide hits. And in Grieving Moms, we talk about when the landslide hit, the day that we lost our child. And it talks about, you know, how to work with other people. It talks about how all the family members are going to grieve differently and how to respond, how to go through the holidays, which we're going to talk about a lot, obviously, as we are definitely in the midst of all of that. So please write down grievingmoms.com forward slash store. And that is where, and I don't want to sound like a commercial heavens, but this is the, the Grieving Moms book that everybody asked me, like, how can you get it? It's not on Amazon. I hope to get it on there. But from right now, that's the best way. And then don't forget, if you want to get um, Hope at Sunrise, which is the daily devotions, it comes out on Facebook daily as often as I can, but for sure as a definite, it will come into your email if you just send in a request on the grievingmoms.com. There's no spam. You don't have to worry about any of that. And if you've already gotten to number 200, because I've only written 200 only, you then have to sign up to get them again, to start all over again, because we're always at a different place when we're going through the grieving or any just going through life in general. So it's really important to just to kind of keep having God's word in your life constantly, especially when we're in this moment. So I also want to encourage you that while we're watching this live Facebook, that you can put in where you're viewing from. And we'd like to know that if you have any questions or comments as we're interviewing and, and talking to my friends or just in general. But also know that I am going to be doing a lot of talking about the holidays. And I don't want to bring it to a place of angst into your lives. Holidays can actually be fun. They can be a, just a different, it's just going to be different. But you have to change things up a lot of times because trying to do the same traditions are going to cause a lot of triggers. But we'll go into that a lot later. So enough, enough of Jackie. Let's talk here. I would love to introduce to you. Uh, I'm going to start with Kathy because most of you know Kathy and Kathy is the background and that's where she likes to be for Grieving Moms and you'll get a lot of um, your questions answered by Kathy. You get her emails. Uh, she does all of that amazing work that is making my life just so much more smooth and, and making things possible for me to do all the stuff that I do. And then even more important, sorry, Kathy, is the lady that brought this this woman into uh, onto this earth is her beautiful mother, Luana. And oh, it's just amazing how God works. Everybody say hi to Luana. And because who would have known that my best friend would have ended up losing a brother and then her mom was also going to be a grieving mom. She's uh they've experienced a lot of grieving in their family. But uh, I wanted to say that Luana was also a part of our Monday morning group. We had a group of amazing ladies that I just, love, love, love. And they grew together as a little family. And I know that some of them even stay connected to this day. And so Luana, thank you for being here. I always tell everybody, I'm like, you, you were voluntold, right, to be on here. But there's such a big blessing after these things are all done. And look, at already five minutes has gone by because I've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> My friend loves to say, talk. Yes. And, and, and hi, say, I'm going to say hi to, to the ladies that come on here when I can. So I'm going to say hi to Mary West. Thank you for being here, Mary. So Luana, let, let's just talk a little bit about, share about as much as you would like, and only as much as you would like about um, Michael and maybe like when it happened. Um, it was about 11 years ago, a little over 11 years. And um, my son 
uh, took his own life. Uh, it was not the first attempt. Um, it had been years of going through different things. He had some uh, chemical dependency issues and, and life choices that were um, holding him back, holding him down. Um, but uh, when he uh, took his life, was successful at doing that, it certainly was um, a tragic time, but um, and uh, briefly, I had uh, some people around me, but um, not for a very long period of time, and um, I didn't really heal, I don't think, like I should have. I quelched it and just held it in. Uh, there was um, not not a lot of support from some of those family members and people close to me. Um, God, that makes you feel so even more lonely, right? Because they don't know what to do to help you. Um, probably, but it it kind of shut me down. Uh, hmm. In one of our grieving mom groups, we discussed uh, one thing in particular that hit home with me and probably has with other people, that there can be people in your life, whether it's family members or other people, that um, un unknowingly say things that are very hurtful, like, uh, you need to just get over it. Hmm. Haven't so, we all heard that, ladies? <laughs> so when that occurred, I shut down and I said, that's it. I, I won't share anything else with that person. And so mm. closed me up. And then, you know, and at the time I didn't, um, I didn't know anyone who had been through it and that could really share with me. And uh, so I guess I was shut off for about 10 years. Uh, wow. shut, down, shut off, whatever you want to call it. And then um, with my daughter's association with you, the Lord used her, in my view, as a key to unlock hmm. that part of me. And then with my association uh, with you through her and then the grieving moms group that I joined, Actually, the beginning was the launch, the book launch, the book launch. Yes. Yes. And that was the, I think the beginning of the healing, mm -hmm. but the door had been unlocked through her association with you. And mm. uh, anyway, so it's, it's interesting how God works. Um, Even 10 I, years later. Pardon? Even 10 years later, he, you know, he's like, not, not now, not now, now, you know, he comes in and just at the right timing. In his time. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't I, even realize that it had just, that I had just shut down. I, and, but, you know, I should have realized it because I wouldn't look at any pictures of my son. I didn't want to discuss him at all with anyone. And so, you know, there were signs. I was just ignorant of them. She didn't well, listen to for years yeah. afterwards either yeah, I, I quit listening to music because um I was, I, and mostly i listened to christian music but there was a, a particular song that was playing and um at that point you know because i had been trusting the lord for him to survive to come through this and then it's like i, I just shut down there too i didn't want to hear any music it not just christian music no music in my life for a number of years. Yeah. Wow. So, um, and, and by the way, if you're just joining us, because I know a lot of you guys just came in, um, I want to say hi to Kathy Taylor. Kathy does the um, the hurting moms mending hearts hey, for the moms going through uh, a lot of stuff with their children that are still living on this earth and that are maybe struggling with drug addiction. Maybe they've had other attempts, you know, with suicide. And to say hi to my awesome cousin, Judy. It's so great to see you out there watching me doing this. And Margie, thank you for being here. Nancy, you guys all are awesome. Thank you for being here. And again, we are talking to Luana and uh, Kathy and uh, Luana sharing about 
her son that uh, took his life about 10 years ago. And it, um, I just want to say like, it doesn't matter how long, unless it's really a dark, dark place that it takes for you to finally, if you want to say come out and to start really talking about it. And uh, Luana, I guess the question I have for you is during that time, I mean, 10 years seems like a, a long time, but I mean, it actually goes by somewhat quick if you like were to look back and go, oh my gosh, like it's been 10 years, right? But during that time, like what, what did you do? Did you spend a lot of time in God's word to be able to get through it on your own, isolated with him or insulated, I should say? I um, I kind of shut down on that too because I, I, I didn't understand and it was difficult for me to accept that my son did not survive. And, um, but inwardly, the Lord was with me the whole time, mm. always there. And there were times that I could talk to the Lord, but um, I didn't go to church for a while. And I just, um, I, it's like I was around people, but I wasn't involved. I, I wasn't, I don't even know how to describe it. You kind of shut yourself out, I think, away from people. Um, yeah. Like maybe not always physically, but like emotionally, I think. Kind of try. It's almost like you see you're sealing unintentionally, you're sealing in so much is going on because you're afraid to bring it out because you're afraid of like what the response is going to be. And maybe you know, maybe the criticism of like, you know, like you said earlier, and a lot of the moms, thank you for saying that, Luana, a lot of the moms do say, you know, people will come up to them and say, oh my gosh, it's been, you know, for us, it's going to be three years in January. You know, they haven't said, aren't you over it yet? They're saying, oh, well, things should be so much better now. And, and granted, I want to remind everybody that, you know, people don't know what to say. I, I'm going to tell you that all the time. So have grace for them. But at the end of the day, because nobody, and we don't want them to know what it's like to lose a child. We don't want them to know. So they are really trying to bring you back to who you were before you lost your child. And, and you're not going to ever be the same. You know, you can be better in the sense of where, you know, God's going to sanctify you through this. He's going to make you closer to him. Maybe not right away. You know, there's that trust issue that comes in. And I know a lot of the moms, you know, totally understand that. Uh, Darla here is saying, I have felt the same. I don't listen to music anymore and I can't look at pictures. And I don't know how long it's been for you, Darla, but you know, again, Kay Warren always says when you can, you will. So don't ever feel as though there's things like, you know, I have my son's, you know, remain sitting here in my bedroom and a picture of him, a precious picture. And, you know, people are like, well, don't you think you should get rid of that? Or, or you know, put, put him in a special place. And it's like, well, it's not bringing, it's not making me stuck. It's not, you know, tearing me apart every time, but I'm just not really ready. Like I carried him in my womb. Like I can't like, I know where he's at. Ultimately we, we know that, but um, it's just that thing of just like, even when we first had them putting Randy down the hallway in a crib and me being in the other room, I was having separation anxiety, you know, cause I carried him for nine months. Right. And so now now he's in heaven and he's in the best hands he's ever going to be in. Michael's in the best hands he's going to ever be in. All of our kids are that. But at the same time, it's just that mama's heart that no one knows what it feels like. And again, we don't want anybody to know what it feels like. Yeah. So at that time that you were, were, were spent, you know, in that place of isolation, you probably, you probably struggled a lot, like you said, with God and, talking to him, but yet it's amazing because to me, I look at you and so many of the moms being very courageous because, you know, you kept breathing and you kept pushing on because somewhere there, that underlying, that foundation of faith was there so that, you know, a storm came in, it just didn't blow down the house, you know, it wasn't built on sand, it was built on, on solid foundation so that you were able to endure even if it was for, you know, for 10 years. And, you know, I want to say too, Lauren, I hear that you say what a lot of us do, which is, you know, I should have maybe gone and done this or I should do that. And my little funny is don't should on yourself, right? 
<laughs> we never want to do it on ourselves, especially as a grieving, grieving mom. I love you too, cousin. I really, really, really love you. And I really miss you. And um, Darla said it's been three and a half years for her. Again, ladies, if you're just coming and tuning in, um, my name is Jackie, founder of Grieving Moms, Finding Hope. And on our um, Facebook Live tonight is Luana and Kathy, mother, daughter, and uh, mom, uh, Luana lost Michael about 10, 11 years ago, and Kathy lost her brother. And they're here being so um, honest and transparent and sharing about their journey. And I have to say, um, I know how how um, courageous you really are because I know that this is not easy for you to do. And I really want to just commend you and thank you for that because I know these moms feel the same as you do, and yet you're willing to be able to bless them for that. And we are in the season of, of being thankful. We're, I've got my turkey back here. Here, wait, the other way. Thanksgiving. <laughs> And, you know, I, I was saying to them before we came on that throughout the year, we should always have moments of Thanksgiving, you know, not that we have to make a turkey and Thanksgiving stuffing and all those things, although I really do want that throughout the year because I love it. And but we should have I should on myself, we need to take the time to be thankful to God in the midst of our grieving or in the midst of any life's landslides, because if we're writing down how grateful that we are about things, it slowly just lifts off that heaviness off of our shoulders of what the world brings to us all the time. And just to be able to say, you know what, one thing I'm grateful for, especially now living in Bend, is I have a mattress pad that's got a little heater in it. And when I'm getting ready to go to bed, I turn that thing on. And when I get in there, I am so thankful that I'm not on the streets and homeless and you know, all those things that we can be thankful for in the midst of our, our grieving. So, and by the way, Kathy, you're not going to be happy when you come back because I brought a lot of things home today, just as a side note. Oh, no. <laughs> wood projects. And speaking of wood projects, like, so Luana, is there things that you like to do, like, um, in in your time, your downtimes, and where, like, you could maybe share with the ladies, there's something that brought peace and tranquility to you. And I know you just got connected um, where you're located in a church. Is that correct? Yes. Well, it, I've been going there about two and a half years now. And wow, that was a big step too, because um, the worship music and everything. Um, great. So it was really hard at first, but it's wonderful now. Hmm. And uh, there were so many things in the Grieving Moms group that helped me during the course of going through that. Um, things that you shared that are in the book and that you shared with us, um, that it's okay. Wherever we're at, what whatever we're experiencing is okay. Mm -hmm. whatever it is that it's not a certain way to grieve or a certain time period. And so that helped me a lot. That's huge. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, I was completely alone during those 10 years. I had uh, a couple of friends and, you know, and some family members that were there. It's just that I didn't want to discuss uh, my son. And of course, part of it was that um, I was raising two of his children when it occurred. Mm -hmm. And I also felt the need to be strong for them. And there were times that I felt like if I, if I don't keep it closed off, if I open up and cry and, you know, let that out, I didn't know if I could stop. Mm -hmm. And I had to function. I had to be able to take care of the girls. So going to church and being in the group kind of helped you to understand what you went through those 10 years, but then also yeah. to help you to move forward and to kind of come out of that place. Yes. And going yeah. through the book. Yeah. That there were a number of things that just really um, hit home for me and helped me to understand what had happened and made it okay to to go through in in my own way. And mm -hmm. of course, I had tremendous support and help from my daughter. She helped me go through the photos the first time. Well, actually at the book launch, 
um, you had given us all a candle and a, a jar and we wrote something on it. And then Catherine came and we went through the pictures. The first time was the most difficult, but we got through it. And I had one picture of him that I uh, have had put out. That was the first one to put that one out. And then I put that candle there. And then when we had the grieving moms group, I would light the candle and his picture was right there with me while I was in the group. Hmm. So anyway, never that, forget that. that was a comfort for me. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a beginning, a, a new beginning. Yeah, that was a beautiful, that was a beautiful evening. So what Luana's talking about is, uh, yeah, the night of the book launch, we had some of the moms that stayed after and we lit a candle and we were able to say, you know, when was the last time you said the name of your child, you know, out loud? Um, you know, a lot of times it's like, you don't want to bring it up. And, you know, especially in a suicide, you know, there's for a lot of family members, especially as mamas, it's like, you know, there's, there can be, and especially with the way that my son, you know, left this world and, Many of you know the story, and if not, you can read it in the book here. Uh, it was very shaming for me because I knew what kind of a man that he was, but yet the world only recognized and saw him as how he left, and that's that's difficult. So when you said you had people around you, you want to talk about it, it's like that saying is like you're alone, but you're never alone. And the very thing we need to do is to cry. And, you know, it's going to be that ugly cry sometimes, right? Where it's like, it's just going to come out so much. I mean, Kathy's seen a lot of ugly cries. I have like a lot of tracks down my face <laughs> of tears, just like, like, like crevasses, like almost on my, on my cheeks from crying. And, um, but it's okay because I always say after it rains, it's always much clearer outside. You know, it's more crisp and clear. You can see things better. I'm not going to sing. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I'm not going to sing that. But <laughs> but during that time, I, I remember to being in the group and uh, this is the freedom. And, you know, it, it there was there was a huge healing, I think, for you and many of the moms that when we got together in a group that we all spoke this language that we could all understand, which wasn't not that it wasn't welcome but it was just very hard and everybody just nodded their head. They're like, yep, I hear you. I understand that. And, and Luana, let's not discount the fact that you were, you were raising, you know, your son's girls. And, you know, that was, that was one of your places of hope for sure. Right. Is that you had to live for them regardless, you know, how dark and deep that it, that it was. And that was how, you know, again, we know that God did to make this happen, but that was God's design for you to have to take care of them, for me to have to take care of my grandsons and, you know, my daughter in love living in the house with me and the chaos that is that goes along with that. I mean, you have to be strong in your foundation of the Lord during that time. And Margie's on here saying, I have not had time to grieve like I should. Don't shoot on yourself, Margie. I went right into being mom to my daughter's son and being there for him. It's like I have been put on the back burner. I understand that. But again, you know, moms. And Juanita, thank you for being here. She's calling. Uh, calling. She's moving from Santa Rosa. Juanita. Hi, Juanita. Yeah, see, look at you got your friends that, uh, that are on here watching. I love Juanita. It, you know, I love getting the moms in the group because I get to know you ladies better. You know, we get to know one another. I feel like when I see you then here on Facebook that I'm like, I remember conversations and I remember your beautiful smiles. And it's just that, that love that we have that no one understands. Uh, but again, ladies, let's, let's kind of, I know we're kind of getting to the end here, but I, I do want to say that, you know, don't forget about you. You know, that is, that is the biggest mistake that we can ever make. You know, we have to take care of ourselves. And I always talk about how God just brings us our medicine. You know, there's so many things that I have done in order to try to calm. I mean, recently I've had a lot of anxiety. You know, I don't know necessarily where it came from, but, you know, the heart palpitations and all those things. And I will have to say that even this morning, you know, as I was getting ready, all of a sudden I was like reading my devotion and I was stopped and I froze. I went back to a frozen place and I was like, I'm never, I'm never going to give, you know, my son a hug again here on this earth, on this side of heaven. I'm never going to be able to hear his laugh. Like I'm not going to see him. And all of a sudden it's like, I know that, but it hit me. And I know that that happens. So don't be, 
beating yourselves up if you go back to that day of that landslide or if you go back to those moments of where it's just that painfulness. But I will tell you, ladies, and I'm sure, Luana, you could say too, that the load gets a little bit lighter and you don't get over it. We go through it, correct? Yes. You have to go through it. So when you guys are getting ready for the holidays, you know, don't get yourself worked up and trying to make everything just so, you know, trying to keep tradition, trying to make everybody happy navigating. You know, we're going to talk a lot about that. <clears throat> it's very important for the family to discuss, even if, especially if it's your first Christmas, to discuss how you want to go through the holidays. What would make everybody happy? Because someone may say, you know, they want to do something and it's really going to be a bad trigger for somebody else. And you're not going to be able to come up with like the perfect solution, but I'm just going to encourage all of you to get up, get outside and go and do something different. You know, I'm, I'm just saying too, it's going to snow here, they say, and I am going to run outside and I don't care how cold it is. And I'm going to be thanking the Lord for the snow because it brings such a comfort to me and I can come back in the warm house. I don't know how my horses are going to feel in that in that snow that we're supposed to get. But, you know, you have to just get up and out of yourselves. And you have to put the focus on not other people all the time, but just don't keep looking inward at the painfulness that you're going through. Whenever you can, like right now, Luana, you're on here. And you have gotten up and out of yourself and you have made yourself available to be able to share and let these ladies know what your story is so that they can think, oh, that's like, I, I felt that way too. And that reassurance, knowing that they have gone through something like that, they're going to be okay because of that. Because they're, sometimes we can get anxiety from thinking, gosh, does everybody get, you know, heart palpitations? Does everybody feel this way? And sometimes when we're in that community, yeah, that happened. And here's what I did. And it's comforting. It's not stirring up a, more anxiety talking about it. It's just to say, and I'm going to say it to every one of you right now, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You have to trust in the Lord that that is of his promise. He is close to the brokenhearted. He says that in over and over in his scripture and find those scriptures, especially during the holidays, they're going to comfort you that are going to bring him closer to you to be insulated with him and don't isolate yourself that you're going to be away from people. And again, like I'm not saying that's bad, but you'll know when it's, when it's not okay, because then you're going to start, you'll get, you'll turn inward. You'll go into that depression. You know, you'll start having those thoughts that Satan puts in your mind that that's what we're here to protect you from going down that spiral, that getting in those spin drifts where he's going to just start, to want to take you down because friends, you guys are breathing. And the mere fact, I'm going to say this every time that you're still breathing, you are a threat to Satan because hardly anybody is going to ever go through this. There's not that many, unfortunately there's more nowadays, but this is a huge, huge cross to carry. It is as a grieving mom. And by you getting through that and these other moms that this is their worst nightmare and you're doing it, you're going to, you're going to bless them because you, they're going to see their strength in the Lord during that time. Thank you for my, um, my ongoing support to my friend that has been through so, so much. I told her she needs to write the book. She needs to be the one because she has witnessed things that um, people always say, well, you know, gosh, I wish I could have been there for you, Jackie. And it's like, really, would you have wanted to be there during the darkest times? Like, God only calls those to be our search and rescue team that can handle it, that can handle it. It's not easy to see your friend. It's not easy to see your mom. If your, your kids are watching this, other kids or family members that are watching, it is not easy to watch someone to go through the loss of a, a very close dear loved one, especially a child. It's not. So um, thank you, Kathy, for that. And thank you, Lana, for making such a beautiful daughter and uh, how you raised her. And thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> yes thank you well but but you could have you could have gone another direction you couldn't have you could have chose to not raise her under god's word but you did I you were so, obedient in that sense so yes so, so again if um and, and kind of in closing uh don't forget ladies that you know this is this is a tool this is not showing you how to go to grieve this the way jackie says this is to help 
to like delicately walk you through this journey. So many moms have gone through it. So many moms are smiling and we were able to laugh, but it's grievingmoms.com forward slash groups to sign up to be in a group or grievingmoms.com forward slash the store to get the book, however you want. But I really encourage you so much to, to get the daily devotion. Hope it's sunrise into your email box. You can also find that on the website as well. Uh, I want to, um, again, say thank you to you guys. I wish every one of you the most blessed, beautiful Thanksgiving. And I hope that during that time that you will get and to um, speak in the name of Jesus Christ and be bold with them. Ask them how their, their walk is with God, especially those that have had family members that have gone on. Write down that thing or go around the table as some of us do and be thankful don't skip the prayer and say, my stuffing's getting cold. Really thank God before, pray before the food's on the table and take those moments to where we can all share of something that we're thankful for and then dig in and then go into the food coma. Yeah. So yeah. again, happy Thanksgiving. I love you ladies both so much. And um, I hope you have a good rest of your evening. God bless each and every one of you. And we will see you next week. We love you. We love you. Thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> Love you.